Hello, and welcome to Nomadic Diaries, the re-entry series. I'm Doreen Cumberford, the host. And I'm Linda Mueller, the co-host. Hi, everybody, and welcome to Nomadic Diaries. It is my pleasure and privilege today to introduce you to a friend and a colleague and someone I've known for several years, and that is Jerry Jones. Hi, Jerry. Hi, Doreen. It's great to be here with you. Oh, it's so great to see you and hear you again. (laughs) Jerry is, for our listeners' benefit, Jerry is an American cross-cultural listener, learner, trainer, speaker, and coach. He has served many iterations as a transition specialist for lots of people living, hundreds of people living beyond their passport culture. And so he's going to talk to us a little bit today about um, his returns and specifically his repatriation experiences because he came back from China twice, I believe. Is that correct, Jerry? Yeah, that's right. That's right. Two two different times, about five years apart um, mm-hmm. and a total of about 14, 15 years in China altogether. Can you uh, walk us a little bit through that process of what it was like, your first and your second returns? Yeah, they were polar opposite completely yeah. different and both hard right? both of them were had their own challenges you know like, yeah. it, like it's yeah. never easy our first one was if i could write a book about how it should be done how it, mm-hmm. how it should go like this was this was it we had we had great friends on the ground uh, said goodbye as well got on the plane landed our friends had signs made for us welcome they let yeah. us stay with them for uh, a week or so he actually runs a company gave me a job so i could have a kind of a place to kick off and start he they like that family paid our rent for wow. 5 months when we landed wow. just so they and they hung pictures like they hung family pictures up in our apartment <laughs> when we got back they, I, I mean, we were so well taken care of. We had great community, met a lot of great people. It was amazing. And it was, it was about maybe six months in, even though it was amazing and I was loving it, was loving them. It was a great experience. I, I was itching to be back in China yeah. uh, again. Yeah. Like it, it really didn't take long. And, and it was about two years, two years that we stayed in that place. And, and that last year was kind of working our way back to China uh, and then we we stayed there for about five years and then did it again, did the repatriation thing. Now, the second repatriation experience, was that not provoked in part by COVID? Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. It was. And, so and it wasn't it wasn't a direct. We didn't get out of oh. China to get away from COVID. I mean, I mean, hey. good thing that would have been a that would have been a misled. Um, OK, endeavor. But uh, it, it it impacted us financially. Like it, I I was I had kind of morphed into uh, doing some independent contract work, and mm-hmm. and a lot of that was with international schools. Sure. Uh, and international schools, like when COVID hit, just got the crunch put on them. Right, like they yeah. sure. they all of a sudden were wondering if they were going to be able to open the next year. And so, you know, transition support uh, was mm-hmm. was one of the first things to get to sure. get cut. And was working with with other groups as well, but we uh, we kind of saw the writing on the wall, and and I, I I made the decision in that process. I wasn't ready to come back to the states. Mm-hmm. Uh, wanted yes. to wanted to give it a go somewhere. Um, yes. So we looked at the map and we found this little bitty island it was right in the middle of Europe and North yeah. Africa, Middle East, and I had connections all over the place there, and I was gonna. I was going to go do this next big thing and do what I'd done in China. And I got to go other places too while I was in China, but did a lot in China. Was so excited to to do this thing and expand and and do something new. And, and at that point, I don't think any of us had really uh, like reality of COVID hadn't set in yet. Mm-hmm. Uh, how right. much it was going to, you know, this is going to blow over. This is going to, we're going to get yeah. past this. Yeah, of course it has an impact yeah. now. But we tried to do that right in the in the middle of the pandemic, and it was it was just a mess. Um, so we stayed we stayed our ninety days, which was what we were allowed, um, and and then we flew back to the states. You know, for me, it was unwillingly. I think my wife was was ready to get back, and it was just yeah. you know she was exhausted from uh, all of the transition, all of the moves, and ready to be back in the states. I wasn't. 
but that's yeah. that's where we landed and and so it was a that was just a whole different experience completely so that sounds like it was pretty emotionally and psychologically difficult for a long period of time and when we live through these liminal periods of time months mm-hmm. months mm-hmm. of transitioning it it can really wear you down it it did it did and i i didn't it, you don't the, the challenge is you don't recognize that's happening when it's happening, right? Like you're just that's going right. day to day, doing the next thing, excited still about doing something new, and yeah, and and that's that's the was the challenge for me. I think was this is what I do. I love transition. Yes. You know, I love yeah. to move. I love to go to a new place. I love change, uh, yes. and I teach people about that yes. stuff. Yes. And I didn't realize just how much of <laughs> how much of that stuff that I teach applied to me. And, and, and it was, it was just such a different experience that, you know, there are moments turn into days and days turn into seasons of really kind of forgetting to take care of yourself and and not recognizing how how much of an impact this is actually having. So it it did have a big, big impact. I was talking with my uh, co-presenter in the series on repatriation yesterday, and we were talking about how insidious it is that these little things, that they start to be little, Mm -hmm. oh, you don't sleep so well at night for a few nights, or oh, you're not eating exactly Mm -hmm. on schedule, or oh, you're exercise. And actually, it's these little things that over a period of time, all build up and have huge unintended consequences yeah, they really that, do. that make it harder, don't they? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Having that awareness, coming to that awareness, I think allowing that awareness, because when you when you acknowledge the negative impact, you know, you're also letting go of some of that. Those of us who love transition, you you come in with full anticipation. You're excited about that new thing. And yeah. you have to you have to acknowledge hey, that's going to take longer than I thought it was going to. And there are, there are a lot of, there are a lot of pieces involved here, a lot of moving pieces. And you just have to step back and, and let yourself take care of yourself and the, and then the people around you. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Like put the mask on first, start breathing. <laughs> exactly. Then, then take care of, of your people. Yeah. Because uh, I always say novelty has a very short runway. <laughs> oh, that's good. <laughs> I like that. And 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 I know my brain is always looking for the novel. And so yeah. so yeah. that that's the challenge is how do we how do we relocate ourselves in a holistic manner that takes care right. of every part of us, but at the same time feeds that spirit of adventure. Right. What did you come up with that yeah. that supported your next iteration? Yeah. Well, I, I think one of the pieces that I had to acknowledge, and this is this is the advice I give anyone who's who's doing this. Um, there's a lot of talk when you're about to make a big transition about expectations. Yeah. And so people people typically land on hey, set high expectations and just go for it, right? Like maybe that's the advice. Or the like the opposite is just go in with zero expectations and you'll be fine, right? If you don't expect anything. Yeah. You'll, you'll get there. And I always, I always struggled with that. And the advice that I had to come to grips with for myself was, was more around postpone your expectations, right? Like mm-hmm. set your expect. It's okay to have high yeah. expectations. You're going to do great things and it's going to be yeah. amazing. And it's, it's yeah, going yeah. to be wonderful. Yeah. It's, it's going to take longer. That's what transition does, right? That's what transition exactly. is. It's, and it's going to take yeah. longer. It's uh, going to take longer and it's going to look different from the way is. vision it has is. programmed it That's because right. we program it a certain way in our vision and in, in yeah. all the sensory ways that we can. And yeah. then something else gets delivered and you go, oh, this is a different kind of baby. You see that coming, <laughs> right? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So maybe, maybe it's even like, I, I like that. Like I, I would even tweak it to like postpone your flexible expectations right let them let them be flexible we all know flexibility yeah. is important but yeah. it's also important to be firm right like it's important yeah. to make yeah. a decision people who are only yeah. flexible have a lot of fun for a little bit but that's that's on that same short runway right exactly. um, but <laughs> people who are firm and not flexible um they break when when it yeah. gets too heavy when it gets too hard right so yeah. I, I think that that balance of Firm flexibility is is a rich way to set your expectations 
um, yeah. so that one, they can be met, but at the same time, you can you can change when you recognize they need to. And I'm sure that when you came back for the second iteration, you ran into different experiences or societal norms because in that time, <laughs> America had changed. That's a that's a people that's a had changed. Way to say it, yeah, 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 <laughs> um, yeah. It was just. I remember kind of processing, you know, every once in a while, somebody would ask about how repatriation is going. And and I'm just like, this is, I've never seen anything like this before. No. Um, and I understand there's lots of different experiences and, and yeah. lots of different uh, dynamics that play into different peoples. But for me, yeah, like I had, I had written the lists and I had taught the stuff and like, I, I thought I had the pieces of repatriation figured mm. out. This one was mm -hmm. done in a pandemic while while the world is going crazy to a country that is probably going crazier than most or all and then the political uh mm. mess around that uh, yeah. you know some connected to covid some connected to just who we sure. are like and and that hasn't that hasn't really slowed down since but it's it it, it was just i didn't know how to expect i didn't know uh i, I didn't see those realities um that's not in the textbook way to do repatriation right like no, you, you no. always say yeah your 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 people your places change as you do while you're away and then you come back to it but this was the volume was just turned way up on all of that and it was um it was intense yeah and i think then you're left with this experience of of being a spacewalking you know of mm, being mm -hmm. of being an astronaut so a lot of people struggle with their feelings of like identity and you came back to a world that was um politically polarized and mm -hmm. then also absolutely uh, jangled whose a country whose nerves were jangled by this huge pandemic yeah, yeah. did this uh, affect you in a very personal way i mean did you have some yeah. experiences of who am i or who do i or how do i recreate my identity in this crazy environment D is that different from what someone would experience today for instance jerry mm, mm, that's that's a that's a great question uh and my answer to did i experience that is absolutely yes um because for me it was that was my that was my role and had been mm -hmm. I, I had been building that for you know 15 years plus and culture was my thing I, I loved yeah. it I love to to just explore what happens when people who are really yeah. different from each other yeah. get into the same space and try to do the same thing together yeah. and and figure out how to do that you know I, I think there's tremendous value in in that in working with sure. people who are different and different perspectives and ideas i think it makes everything richer and better but it's hard and it's there's some challenges to that so i had uh, i had just i dove into that space and loved it talked to lots of people and got to sit and you know started two companies just to do that worked with another company uh, uh extensively and it was great that's who i was and it was very much a part of what I did day in, day out. And now I'm sitting, you know, at that point, I'm sitting back in this country. I'm no longer an expat, you know, and and I kind of sensed that the first time I repatriated, it was like, okay, we we set the timer on yeah. your relevance, right? Like how how long do want right, to people yeah. how long do people want to listen to the yeah. guy who says, I used to do this yeah. or when I did this, this yeah. is how it was for me, because everything moves yeah so quickly. And so uh, there was there was a lot of soul searching during that time and just kind of thinking, right. you know, what do I what do I do now? Do I just go out and get a job? Do I do my own thing? Do I try to keep this running? Uh, but it was very much just felt like a huge piece of me was gone. And it was the part that I enjoyed the most. It was the part that I had the most fun with, right? Like I loved being a foreigner. I loved me too. Uh, I'm, still a, around, I'm still a foreigner. You know, <laughs> <laughs> trying to make this language work and trying yeah. to figure things out like that yeah. was I really enjoyed that yeah and and then now all of a sudden you know I'm not a foreigner and and nobody really cares right like that's not the most exciting thing for anyone so I, yeah I I completely understand because after uh 35 years of being an expat I mean mm -hmm. my identity was so bonded and so wrapped yeah. up around those roots 
yeah. that I tried to be an expat in America. Nobody knows what one is. And so yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what what are you what are you trying to do? And so it was a it's it's becomes very confusing. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, creating so okay, I'm the person that used to be and used to do and used to have and used to think. And yeah, now yeah. who am I, who am I going to be? And you know, what, are, what choices am I faced with and who am I right, going to be? Right. And we have to, it's, I think it's really important to take a lot of time. Do you tell t- people to take a lot of time thinking about who they're going to choose to be? Mm, I think that's great advice. I think, and I think that's a great thing to, that, and that's a process, right? Like you don't just sit right. down and, and no. make a decision. No, um, there's there's a lot that goes into that. And there's factors that are involved in that that you have no control over. Right. Like for me, I I ended up with a job and and it was about the time that I I did this. I had this soul searching moment where I was like, OK, do I want to pursue a job and just pay the bills and just do the thing and just just settle mm-hmm. into that and let it be what it is? Or do I want to do this thing that I've been doing and really pursue it and and I decided that, and I'm gonna I'm gonna work to make this happen. Yeah, I was yeah. I was not super motivated at the time. It was I was still struggling more than I I let myself think. But I was like, I really want to do that. And yeah. I remember making a video about it. And I said, and if there was a job that came open, I'd take it. Right, like that that it was something yes. that I could love. Yes. And yes, yeah. And one of those came and it was great. It was, it was all about helping people who are different from each other, figure out how they do the same thing together. And, and so that's been amazing and it's been wonderful, but that would, I had no control over that. I wasn't expecting that. It just kind of came out of, out of nowhere. And and you were voting for yourself. You were voting for what makes you yeah, come alive. Yeah. yeah. And, I, and I knew that I I was able to, to really weigh those out and, and say, no, uh-huh. I, I know, I know who I am somewhere mm-hmm. in there. Yeah. I know that I still want to do this and I, yeah. and I'm going to pursue that. And then things changed and I got to do that and have wow. a job. So like that, that works well. It works. This for me. And, 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 and I think sometimes when we can just get ourselves out of the way, I, well, yeah. for, I'll speak for myself when I can get my big stupid self out of the way <laughs> <laughs> and yeah, things, things can fall together. They can, yeah. you know, life can fall together like that. And and I think for people who are moving home, how much does faith play a role if you mm. have faith? Yeah, so yeah. let's let's say that maybe maybe half, maybe 75, I don't know how many people have faith nowadays. Yeah. Yeah. But do you have advice for someone who has a, a definite belief system, like they're mm-hmm. Buddhist or they're something, yeah, on how yeah. to how to deploy their faith. Yeah, yeah. Well, I I think that it's it's one of those scenarios when you're going through massive transition. It's like you get to sca- scrape a lot of the, the crap off of your faith, right? Like, and and it doesn't matter what your faith is. There's probably <laughs> yeah. a lot of crap on it, right? Like, yeah. um, and that's just how culture works. That's just, I mean, we we yeah. build things up and we put more stuff on there. And and I think situations like this really really dig down deep and and say, hey, what's real here, or yeah. what are you going to believe is real here. Yeah. And and then what are you going to do with with that versus, you yeah. know, your normal system of faith expression, whatever that looks like? I, th- I think so. I, I think that's a good thing. I think that's a it's it's a refining thing. It's I think it's good for people to really explore every part of themselves. And faith is is mm-hmm. obviously for a lot of people, a, a huge part of that. Sure. And, and you can choose to go a lot of diff- different directions. You know, you can put the, sure. the, the stamp, happy stamp, everything and connect that to your faith. Right. But that falls apart pretty quickly when, when it gets hot, you know, you can mm-hmm. just explore the realities of all of those little pieces that you say you believe consistently, constantly, they get to be tested. And, and so I think for a lot of people, it's been, it's been refining and it's been, it's been good. Um, I worked with a lot of, uh, a lot of people who just got faced with the immediate removal from this life that they had built, especially in China. 
yes. you know, there was our, our community, uh, yeah. which was largely built around the sure. international school. Like they, they sent their people home for two weeks until it blows over. Right. Uh, well, those people never came back. Uh, some of them did. Most of them right. that ended their, their expat assignment, or at least that one. Yeah. And Traumatic. Traumatic. It, it was, it was. And so there was no good goodbyes. There was no, uh, none of that. No closure, um, no, right. no, no right. celebrations, no sort of counting the moments. Exactly. So, harsh. And, it, it's and so, least, so much of that was gone. Oh. And I think that was their, like, that's where the faith came in for them. Like they were, that's kind of what connected them, drew them together. And yeah. um, so it was absolutely a part of everything. And so looking back, what are some of the most valuable lessons um, that you gained from China that you still deploy or use uh, in, you know, in your homecoming experience? Because I have a belief that once we've gone, we are forever sowing our future together. Yeah. I added yeah. another country in the process, which was, and and so it's a constant. It's it's constantly going back and sewing these pieces together. So, do you have yeah. some lessons or an experience you'd like to share about that for our audience? Yeah, I, I, one of the things that stands out when you <laughs> when you say that we we often use the you know the phrase that we're being we're being hard on China. And we think back to those experiences as an expat, you know, as uh, you go mm-hmm. in, this is all new and this is weird and strange, like like with any any transition. Uh, but we would, you know, whether it was traffic or whether it was lining up or yeah. or it was um, even even signage. We used to get so, so have so much fun with the yeah. mistranslated yeah. English, and yeah. I love that stuff. Yeah. Um, but now being back, it's like we've been given new lenses and you'd be surprised how much just really bad English is is <laughs> is used in marketing uh, anywhere, <laughs> yeah. wherever you are. Exactly. Right? Um, Even and how, and how <laughs> traffic or lighting up or or whatever it is. Uh, um, it's uh, so we we know that we, we, we'll just look at something here and we're like, yep, hard on China. Because it's us too. It, and so I think having those lenses to, which yeah. is what I love about cross-cultural transition, right? Like you get to see a new place and you get to see a new thing and a new people. Uh, but you also get to see yourself like you've never seen yourself before. Uh, and and I think that has been the, the biggest factor as far mm-hmm. as what has changed for us is we've got this opportunity to see who we are and how we respond. And, and sure. that's that's different. So I think being open to that is is critical. Yes. So being open to seeing yourself, it's like a gigantic mirror. Yeah. Yeah. It holds yourself up to yourself. Now, can I, may I ask you how your children mastered this experience called Mm -hmm. their second repatriation? Because they had been in China, back Mm -hmm. to the States, back to China through this, very grueling situation and then transported back to America, which was I'm sure felt like more foreign yeah. after yeah. the after the pandemic or during the pandemic. Right. Did right. they process it differently from you? Yeah, they did. They did. And it was like there's so many pieces that I can point to that say that it, it was kind of their first language. And for me it was a it was a second language, right? Like it was mm-hmm. um it was very much like uh, like I would describe the internet now, right? Like they, they've they grown up with that. They've experienced it. It's always been their normal. And so they understand things about it that I don't, and they do things very naturally that I have to be very intentional about. I watched them do that through transit. The transition, the moves um, didn't phase them. They We would move into a new place and they would just kind of settle into the new existence. Yeah. The, the loss Yes. really hit them hard. And and I wonder sometimes if their ability to transition so well kind of did the same thing that it did in me of, I, I don't recognize how hard this actually is. And so mm-hmm. that's been a part of that process is just recognizing, hey, dad, like we, we left our friends right in the middle of that pandemic. And then, and then we followed you to Malta. And, and at the same time, they'll say, I miss Malta. And we were only there for 90 days, right? Like, so there was, it was a great experience. There were wonderful things, but it was, it was really heavy. And it was, it was really, 
it was hard for all of us. Like it was incredible. And I think the the second or the the yeah, the second language learners culturally there are my wife and I. They have experience, they've grown up with this, so it's normal. But it was it was hard on the two of us as parents. Uh, and so there was higher tensions and frustrations and and then sure. they have to experience that as well. So it was sure. it was big sure. impact for all four of us. So the highs are higher and the lows are lower. Absolutely. But yeah. one of the things that they had, Jerry, was you on their side. I mean, and with having a, you right. know, cross-cultural guru who can, <laughs> you know, although you can you can sort of step back a little bit yeah. and see your kids in a different light from the way that we can't see ourselves, right? Y- yes. So they had the benefit of someone in the room who had a, sort of an overall Sent yeah. a different sense from they had. So well, I, I mean, you're, you're so very lucky. kind, and, and they're so you know, lucky. Yeah, <laughs> but um, I, I think I think we did have the insight to yes. be able to look at the whole situation and yeah. say, okay, I know why this is happening. I know why we're not being nice to each other right mm-hmm. now. We're this mm-hmm. is transition, right? Like yeah. I, I know why I'm exhausted, and just I, I know why I feel depressed. I know. I can, I can say why this is happening, and yet there was a certain powerless powerlessness to do anything about it. Sure. And, and sure. I think that's that was one of the aha moments for me. And I, I think I'd experienced some of that before, but not to this level. Yeah, like I I know about this stuff and I understand it, but I don't I don't get out of it. Right? Like that doesn't. No, we can't uh, escape it. You can't. You can't. <laughs> no. Um, it's it's you may have some resources to change how you respond to it and, and to act differently, which I think, I think we did. Uh, and we failed to do at times. Right. Yeah. Well, we are human. We are. <laughs> and unfortunately, there's just no way to. <laughs> oh, I don't know. I think it's pretty fortunate. I'm glad I can eat. <laughs> I like that's eating. Why, that's why I like you so much, Doreen. You, can, <laughs> you bring sunshine to every part of it. Oh, uh-huh. I don't know. Oh, I don't know. <laughs> Uh, living in my eighth country, there are moments when I think, "Boy, you You're, crazy! Just you moved don't get out of it." You know, even even the Queen of Sunshine, um, you, you still gotta have some dark days, right? Oh, you have to, but you know what? I've, I've, you know what, Jerry? If I I look for the discomfort, I almost prefer mm-hmm. some level now. You know, I have my boundaries on discomfort, but I have um, living in cultural discomfort where there's some rumblings going on that makes me come alive. Yeah. Yep. Yep. Me too. I love that. We love you and I, we love this. Yeah. And so although it's, it's hard and it's hard in some ways that I still can't identify are hard, Mm -hmm. um, Mm -hmm. I, I find that it's one way to stay alive when you have hit your 70s. That's I think great. everybody should go overseas in their 70s. I agree. I agree wholeheartedly. I think <laughs> um, I think why wouldn't you? But, exactly, but not where not everyone. <laughs> Thank that's goodness we're not that's all true. like us. <laughs> and so looking back on these valuable lessons, how have these changed your worldview right now? Yeah, no, that's a that's a big question. Sorry. <laughs> no, no, I, I love big questions. I think that's I think that's great. I I, I will say this. Um, here's here's my answer. I've got a good answer for it. I don't know. Mm. Um, mm-hmm. And that like it's it's the perfect answer because I think my my worldview has been changed more dramatically with I don't know. Than, oh. than anything else. And that's actually just a really wonderful place to be of, of Three. instead of trying to know everything and, and having an answer and then going to battle over that answer, there's just something really authentic and true and real about, yeah, I don't know. I would like to know. I'd like to learn more. Mm. I would like to, I would like to have more information, but honestly, I don't know. And I, and I think the, the uncertainty of this whole mess of this experience, I was already there to some extent, but the uncertainty of this mess um, really showed me more than any experience I've ever had, how much I don't know. Yes. And 
And I'm okay with that. I, I've come to, that was part of my reconciliation with myself. Mm. Just saying, it's okay, Jerry, you don't, you, you're not supposed to know. Yeah. Uh, you can't know it all and we yeah. don't need to know it all. No. But and what, it doesn't make you stupid. It doesn't mean you can't learn. Right. 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 And grow. And, and grow. Absolutely. absolutely. And expand. Yes. And that's what I was saying about the being uncomfortable. I find that growth is uncomfortable, but um, I have to put my position myself in a position of it being a bit hard in, or, in order to feel like I'm growing. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, yep. Yeah. That's that's where the good stuff comes, right? Like that's where the lessons are. Yeah. Yeah. This is the hard stuff. So in clo- this has been wonderful. And I know that um, this is part of the repatriation um, diary series. There's going to be 30 subjects. Um, do you have one or two specific things that you would, that you see as trends it, happening in the repatriation circles? Hmm. Yeah, that's a, that's a, that's another great question. I, and I knew it would be, you're, you're good at questions. Um, I, I think it, it's a really interesting season right now because things are ramping back up, right? Yeah. Like we, yeah. we're pretty sure we've made it through this COVID thing, which that put a, like it threw a wrench in everything. There were, there were moments of, are we ever going to recover? Some of us were really hopeful and saying, yeah, it's just, I mean, this is going to pass. But then it just kept going and going and going. And so from a from a trend perspective, uh, I think there I think we learned so much through that pandemic season of repatriation that we've we've probably got a lot more insight than we had before. We had to do something like you're you're saying, right? Like there's there's great learning in those hard moments. Well that was mm-hmm. that was full volume. And so it would be uh it's it's inevitable that we mm-hmm. learn some things, right? And so I, I think I think the fact that more people are paying attention to it would would be a trend, right? Um finally. Yeah. Finally we're we're recognizing that there's more than one transition when yes. people move abroad and I, and I really I hope to see I like I don't I don't have stats on that or anything but I really hope that companies around the world you know corporations who are sending people to do yes. jobs yeah. with great salaries and all those things that you and I talk about all the time right like yeah. you've got all these things but you've still got this mess to figure out and it's still hard on your family and this is why assignments fail all of that um sure. I I really I really hope to see a higher percentage of of people who are the senders uh, recognize that if you don't take care of people on the way out and, and really help them repatriate well, then you're you're not only doing them a, a huge disservice, but you're you're kind of doing yourself a disservice, right? Like um, it sure. changes changes what happens for you as a company when sure. you don't take care of people in that way, and unfortunately, Absolutely. it has a huge impact on families. So, uh, like, I don't I don't know that I can speak definitively as to whether it's a trend, but what I've seen happening is we're learning through this mess. Yeah. And, yeah. and I really hope that the trend is we, we figure those things out and we help people uh, in that, in that, you know, that other transition, I won't say the final transition sure. because you, you and I both know it's, it's never final. We're not done yet. <laughs> Apparently not. <laughs> <laughs> Bring it on. Bring bring yes, more position. Yes, I say yes. very, very, very quietly. I won't say that too loud. No, no, no. The last we, transition, we, we but don't I, want the whole but, universe to hear it. Right, I still <laughs> long for it um, and look forward to it, yes. but differently. Not not like this one. I, you know, I, one of the things that I've discovered is that um, I'm much more interested in death and dying now that I've moved to Mexico. I feel much more comfortable. Well, um, you know, I'm seven. Yeah, I'm in the seventies yeah. now, and I've got to yeah. face it. And I never did before because I never thought I'd grown up. You just I, didn't ever think that was a reality. I was, right? I was yeah. Petra Pan, mm-hmm. you know, mm-hmm. <laughs> and so I, I just um, find that dealing with transitions all the time and helping people through them, it, it really can build this wonderful wonderful heart wholeheartedness yeah yeah uh, which i find is uh is actually um like a pill for the bittersweet moments that we also carry with us yeah yeah that's so, so good that's it's so this good. end now you have a podcast 
called <laughs> Diesel and Clooney. Can Diesel you tell Clooney. me a wee bit about Diesel and Clooney and how people can find you at Diesel and Clooney? <laughs> yeah, you can find it wherever you find what, <laughs> podcasts, whatever your podcast platform is. Diesel and Clooney Unpack the World. It's it's myself and and uh, my my good friend, Chris O'Shaughnessy. And uh, we just... We really, it was during that pandemic, actually, while I was in Malta, we we started just having some regular conversations as friends. And I remember saying to Chris, we had one call and I was like, I need this. I'm not, I'm not connecting with people. I would really just like to talk. And so we started talking and every time we did, we would share stories and, and we thought, you know, this would be fun to just do on a podcast. And so we did it. We don't put a whole lot into it. Like we, no. <laughs> we don't, we don't, we don't schedule anything. He'll, yeah. he'll yeah. ping me and say, Hey, you want to do a, an episode <laughs> and we do it and we'll have guests on and we talk. But what we thought was interesting about the two of us was that he grew up, you know, cross-cultural his entire life. He was military and yeah. uh, his father was military. And so he, he was that quintessential TCK. Yeah. I've got some of that DNA in there somewhere, but I never got to experience it until I was in my late 20s and even early 30s. But I was raising kids uh, who were that. And so we love to just kind of bring any topic together and look at it from a couple of different angles and just explore things. And and we have fun with it. That's that's really that's the most important thing. Well, this has been a fun conversation. I expected (laughs) if if uh, you were to be the the fairy godfather of all of repatriation and that huge transition that is involved what one superpower would you grant um everyone who is on this path <laughs> i think i think it has to be patience i'm trying to think of something but that that's really that's really the piece that i needed the most and yeah. and the part that was yeah uh, that made it the most challenging it wasn't that things were so terrible I look back and I think we had some good times and there we had some golden moments and they were they were wonderful and I watched my kids grow through that um, I watched our marriage not only survive but um, come to a place of, of of really figuring those things out and doing well with them but patience is a wonderful days gift. there were days when I was just done you know I was just like I I don't uh, I don't I don't know how much more of this I can take, but I didn't have anything else to do. I didn't have anywhere to go. And so it just really felt helpless and, and hard. hopeless. And, hard. Um, and and I, th- I think so. Maybe it's foresight even. Maybe it's not patience. Maybe it's that mm. recognition mm. that the time is coming. Mm. It'll be better. Right. Mm-hmm. That's the hardest thing to see when you're in it. Yes. Yes. I love what you said about foresight. Yes. Mm. Thank you so much. Thanks for this conversation. Thank you. Really appreciate it. And I know that our listeners who are about to transition or who are currently trans in uh, who have transitioned will benefit from this. And thank you so much. I appreciate it. Thank you, Doreen. It's been great.